And uh, a lot of people, you know, talk about reincarnation and coming into the flesh, life after life. And I don't, I don't see it that way. I see the three world ages. The Lord talks about that, confirms it in His book, um, and even talks about the destruction of the, you know, the first world age in Jeremiah chapter four and uh, in in the book of uh, in Peter. But um, the second world age actually began when. Lucifer seduced Eve, impregnated her with Cain. The Lord in Genesis chapter 3 told Eve that she was going to have to give birth to children and that Adam was going to have to now work the soil for food and sustenance to feed his family because they were going to be banished from paradise, put on the earth, and, um, and they were now going to be dwelling with Satan and the other fallen angels that were also banished here. And that became the second world age and also the enmity between the bloodlines, which is Genesis chapter 3, 15. And there would be a war. The second world age would last for 7,000 years. Um, and then we would enter into the third world age, which would be an everlasting age, and there would be no more evil, no more duality, no more uh, Satan and death and um, the false prophet and the false messiah. Um, all those things will have been swept away. And that that is the, the three world ages. The third Adam came in, um, came in on the eighth day, and that was the seventh day was the day of rest. On the eighth day, Adam and Eve, their bodies were transformed into actual flesh. And um, about how they didn't even understand how they were walking. They didn't, um, they had never needed water or thirsted before. They had uh, never hungered. Um, they didn't even have digestive systems to consume food. And, and, and all these transformations took part on the, third, uh, on the eighth day with the third creation of Adam. Those are the three creations of Adam and also the three world ages. Um, did I explain that okay? <laughs> wow, that's excellent. Um, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, question, why... I, one, you made the statement you didn't believe in the reincarnation, and neither do I. I take a view that we time doesn't really exist and that we're eternal beings. And exactly. That, but my question then goes to who were we before we got put into these like computer shell bodies? We were spirits in, in the first world age. We were also servants like us those that love Yahushua and love Yahweh and are servants of Yahweh and uphold salvation as the highest reason for life and incarnation into the flesh. We were the servants of Yahweh. Uh, were and were we angels or were we some other kind yes. of... So yes, we... no, we were, we were angels because um, angels were the, you know, the, the spirits of the first world age. They were the incarnated beings of the first world age. Uh, once the second world age began, all of the angels would then incarnate into the flesh and be given renewed chance to serve either Satan or Yahweh. Um, all, all of the angels are just the ones that were part of the rebellion? No. Uh, well, I don't... Um, some of the angels, you know, like Lucifer and those that fell, those that were cast out, they're they're now demonic entities and demonic beings, but those that were in the interim, and I'm not talking about the highest angels that were also serving Yahweh, like Michael and Raphael and Phanuel and Uriel, they didn't incarnate into flesh, and they they may later at some point, who knows, as Elias or Enoch or whatever, some souls are given special election, but for the most part, those that were in the middle. The, that were not the highest angels of evil and not the highest angels of good. Those are the ones that would incarnate into the flesh and be given chance to um, determine through life and being who they wanted to serve. And this would this our incarnation into the flesh would be proving grounds for that in um, and that whole duality. Um, and so, both good and bad angels, because like Esau, you know, the Lord hated him before he was even ever even born, um, and it talks about that in the Bible. 
the reason being is because he did not uphold his birthright in in the first world age when he was a spirit. He served Satan and gave up his birthright even in in that uh, incarnation. And so when he came into the flesh, uh, he would repeat the same thing. And so there are souls, you know, like even the souls of the apostles, they were chosen for special assignment. And so this this world age, the second world age, and life in the flesh would be where we would be given chance again to prove our faith to the Lord or prove our allegiance to uh, Satan. Yeah, and I actually happen to have a very similar view. Um, let me add, ask a couple clarifying points. Um, God does say that he created us in his own image. Um, if we were pre-existent angelic, uh, how, how then do we differ? Do the, do the other angels, are they also in God's image, or are we a special creation in his image, even though we were we a different kind of angel? Uh, that, that, you see where I'm trying to get a little confused? Are you, you're talking about humanity incarnating yeah, into the flesh, and if, if we're uh, in His image, and the the current angels, you know, He says, "I made you slightly below the angels right, right. in my well, image." There's, there's two different things because remember, um, the Lord created Adam, the first man, in His image, but when Lucifer seduced Eve and created children himself. Through Cain, Cain became a line that was in the image of Satan. So there are both the uh, human flesh that is in the image of God and also in the image of Satan. So it depends on the person. So in the image is some type of genetic code in the... Yes. In, I believe so, yes. In the computer shell, and I, I, actually, that's my research in three-strand triple helix DNA, but, um, so, uh, you got a question on the edge that Daniel didn't pronounce correctly, and, and that's why you probably didn't know what it was, but somebody was trying to ask, were we called the Ophanim angels, which is similar to Ken Klein's research? Okay, the Ophanim and the Seraphim and the Cherubim, those are all the ones that are surrounding the mercy seat and that are serving uh, Yahushua. Now, I don't know, um, I can't recall. There's a book, that, and it's a, it's a book that most people haven't heard of. Um, it's a book about, it's the third book of Enoch, but it's um, from the perspective of Ishmael, uh, Rabbi Ishmael. And he talks about, in this particular book, meeting Enoch, who was transformed into Metatron, who was a, uh, an angel of the Lord. He was also serving as, um, as a witness around the mercy seat. And the cherubim, the seraphim, and the ophanim were there with Enoch, and he saw all of them. But I can't remember right now exactly what. And it gives a description of each one, I believe, um, how many eyes they have, how many wings, how big all that, but I can't remember specifically what that that description was, so I can't really, really say right now. Yeah, and all I'm but saying... I can look it up, so I've got that book. <laughs> all I'm saying is Ken Klein believes that we were the, the souls that got reincarnated here for uh, opportunity to choose were actually the Ophanim species of angel, if you want to use that term. Oh, uh, that, uh, that would be interesting. I haven't... Um, I haven't looked into his research, but I would be interested in seeing where he came to that premise, because uh, that would be something good to know. Yeah, and um, yeah, it, it, it's amazing, because so, so few people, like what I call it, I call it my angel theory, and, and you know, you get rebuked and put down, and you, you're called a her heretic, etc. But it just has made sense to me from the perspective that if we're eternal, then we were we we existed before the incarnation into these bodies, and um, right. 